Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Um, I just want to come today to just share some some thoughts, okay? And also an encouragement to all who are willing to listen to it. And I hope this blesses you. But before we begin, I got to give you the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins and was buried. On the third day rose from the dead, for our justification according to scriptures okay jesus always existed he is eternally self-existing son of god and he is the second person of the godhead god the father god the son god the holy spirit according to scriptures jesus left heaven was born of a virgin lived the perfect life never sinned and shared his precious blood on the cross of calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins past present and future and what god commands is that we believe this testimony concerning his son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us. He shed blood on a cross that it was sufficient to pay for all our sin debts. All, okay? And also to reconcile us back to God. God was satisfied with the payment that Jesus made on a cross on our behalf. Okay? And the resurrection is evidence of that. Okay? God was pleased with the payment. So anyone who believes on his son, Jesus Christ, is immediately forgiven all sins wiped away past present and future and you are justified by god you are sanctified by god and being indwelt by the holy spirit and then you're also glorified by god okay you see paul tells us that we are seated in heaven with christ right now the moment you believe so see it is, it is a present tense. It is not something of a future tense. You already sit it there the moment you believe. All we are doing is waiting for the redemption of our bodies, which is coming at the rapture. And all those who don't agree with the rapture, I don't want to hear your comments. If you don't agree, just keep scrolling, okay? Because you put any negative comment, I will come literally wipe it off and block you. Because what I'm not going to tolerate is discouragement you know from people who disagree with what the bible says if you don't agree with the bible then that's your own prerogative but don't spill that poison on my channel because you will get blocked and your comment removed so i'm just being upfront, okay but anyway god wants us to believe this gospel you know concerning his son that way we can be restored back to him because you see sin entered into the world when man Adam disobeyed God, okay? And he disobeyed God not because he chose to disobey God, but because he got deceived into disobeying God, okay, by Satan himself. So we have an enemy called Satan. While some people don't bring him up at all, I'm here to let you know he is very real, just like God is real. And this enemy is very active. When you look at the state of the world today, man, I can tell you, this is not God's doing. Is the enemy doing what he does best? Bringing destruction, sowing discord, you name it. All the evil you see happening is all on him. Sadly, society today, in some cases, have turned the blame to God. And say, well, if God is real, why is this happening? Why is that happening? Short and simple answer, it is happening because of Satan. Not because Satan is more powerful than God, but because we live in a fallen world and God has restored us. This is why we all need Jesus Christ. If those leaders are born-again believers, decisions they will be making for their country will be different. But unfortunately, when you have unbelievers as leaders of the nation, their own agenda comes first, okay? Not the welfare of others. So, we see all the evil going on in the world today, and yet many people are still blinded by it. I'm here to tell you, we are living in the last days, okay? So, and if you can see it, then I don't know what to tell you guys. You know, why here in America, you know, things kind of seem a little bit, you know, okay for now for a lot of people. But look around the world. There's some serious issues happening around the world, and I'm talking about People are losing homes, properties, uh, uh, possessions, whatever, okay? Lives, okay? Through insane weather that's just 
seems to be getting worse by the day. And people can say, well, yeah, we've had this. No, it's not the same. If you look at even the volcanic eruptions that's happening, it has gotten worse. There's so many more happening. It's almost like the closer to the tribulation, the close, the more we see this weather disasters happening worldwide. And I'm talking about worldwide, not just in one place, and things that makes no sense in certain regions, you know? I mean, snowing in the desert, like what the heck? You know, like there's just things that makes no logical sense at all, you know? But these things are happening. But you forget. Jesus did say, this is part of what we will see in the tribulation. But, you know, the church is not going to be here for the tribulation. But we know that, you know, there has to be a beginning that leads to something. Okay? So, all this is like a precursor that you see of what's to come in the tribulation. You know, once the church is gone, whenever that is, that's when... The tribulation comes afterwards, okay? But we see everything pushing closer to the tribulation by the day. So what am I saying, guys? All I'm saying is our world that we're looking at right now is not a perfect place. You're not going to pray your way into making it perfect because it won't be, okay? I'm just going to let you know right now. Everything is going to keep going downhill until Jesus returns the second for this for the second coming with his saints to establish his millennial kingdom that's when things are going to be good until then this ship is sinking okay praying for your country that god will save your country you know people like to throw that isaiah you know verse you know you know if my people who will call by my name will i'm like please just just stop okay first of all that was addressing israel okay god is not healing america okay and restoring. First of all, okay, if we're going to apply those verse to America, may we begin with let everybody then who the president gets saved, all the cabinet members get saved, everybody in the Senate, everybody gets saved. Then let's go and change all the laws that goes against God's words. Let's begin there, okay? But that's never going to happen, okay? Not happening here. Just like in other countries. So <laughs> we have to be realistic, people, and just really realize just because a few you know, believers are praying doesn't mean that it's going to change the tide of what's already coming. You know, we look at it and say, oh, yeah, well, you know, you know, uh, in, in Jonah, you know, they have to fast and pray and then God had to return. You see, that was different. And this dispensation is coming to an end. That means what you see happening that's already predicted to happen, it will happen. God is not going to change that because then that will require the Bible to be rewritten all over again. It means God is going to be like, oh, I missed something. Okay, I changed them. Oh, time to rewrite the Bible. That's not going to happen. The Bible is done. God already told you how everything ends. So right now, all you can do is come to Jesus Christ by believing the gospel. That's where I'm going, guys. You have to come to Jesus Christ. Trusting in man to save you, in your, in your government to save you, that's a hogwash mentality. Okay? You're wasting your time and you're wasting your breath. I will not even, <laughs> I will not even give that even a thought because none, none of that matters. The ship is sinking. You know, I, I follow this group uh, called Two Preachers on, on YouTube where they do like a weekly, you know, like video just to show you things that's happening around the world, you know, kind of perspective, you know. So because, you know, when you sit in the comfort of your home, home, nothing is happening where you are. Everything seems to be good. You don't you don't really think about that. But then when you see these things, it, it, may, it brings reality and perspective. And then it brings a lot of scriptures to mind as well. Like, wow, this is truly insane what's happening you know so we're very thankful that these things is not happening where we are thank god for that you know could it happen absolutely but we thank god that it does not happen you know or at least it hasn't happened here you know and i pray it doesn't <laughs> until we're out of here i just couldn't imagine the the the, the suffering that these people are going through you know so that brings me to my next point. 
when we preach the gospel, we are trying to direct people back to Jesus Christ. Because things in this world, I mean, this is only temporary. Yeah, I'm going to enjoy whatever, you know, God has blessed me with. I'm not going to, you know, you know, rip, rip myself of that. You got me messed up. I'm going to enjoy it until we leave, okay? Because if God has given it to me, I'm going to enjoy it, you know? It is his good pleasure, and I'm going to enjoy it. Simple as that. Because some people, they will have you really well, you know, you know, you know, instead of enjoying, why don't you just eat one, one meal a day, and then, and then just drink water for the rest of the day, and then, and then go take the rest of the food and just give it to all the shelter and this and that. I'm not doing that, people. I mean, come on, man. Let's be realistic, you know? It's like these people, you know, they think, <laughs> you see, <laughs> whatever God has preordained for us to do, that's what's going to happen, okay? When you think you want to do something out of, you know, your own flesh to satisfy your flesh, that's a waste, dude. I mean, we have to be real, people. You can't impose certain things on people so you can make them feel guilty for enjoying what God has given them. You don't know how far those people have come. You don't know, you know, at some point they didn't have nothing, you know. They didn't have nothing. But they just struggled and they just kept quiet and they kept their head down. And when the time of the struggle was over and now they have plenty, all of a sudden people hate on that. You know, it, it's just so sad. I'm here to tell you guys, trust God. You can trust him. Okay. Let me show you something. I made these notes from scripture. Focus on things above. Let's read. This is from Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Therefore, I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, by the way. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body. What you shall put on is not life, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold, the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Talk about the unbelievers. They seek after all these things. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He said, God knows that you need all these things, people. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Talking about Jesus Christ himself. Believe on him. Focus on Christ and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So here, Jesus is making it quite clear. It's going to be about him. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God knows what you need already. Okay? He's a provider for his children. Okay? You got to trust him. You see, a lot of times people, they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're saved, but then they don't trust him with a lot of stuff. So it's like when... Situations arise, it's like people just become, I mean, they, they still have an amnesia. Like they forget about Jesus. You know, when you were in the world, look at it this way. Peter went to Jesus. He walked on water, right? His eyes was on Jesus. We're going to use the, the water as an example of the world, okay? The world and all its troubles. Peter was looking and focused on Jesus, and he was walking on top of this world and overcoming, right? Because his focus was on Christ. 
The moment he took his focus off of Christ, he began to sink. And he began to be consumed by the worries of this world, by the turmoils that surround him, that we face in this world. He began to be consumed by it. But Jesus had to still come and save him out of that. Lord, save me. And here he is, saving him again. Listen, you know, Colossians 3, 1, to 1 and 2. If ye be risen, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Guys, watching constant news of everything that's going on will drive you off the wall, people. Because there's nothing good that comes out of that. What you're seeing is a lot of times is the evil, is the evil, is the evil. I mean, how much of this do you have to take? We got to stop doing this, people. Spend more time. Instead of spending all your time always digging in the news or all this negative stuff, this one is going on here, that one is going on here, and it's every single day of your life, people. And then you wonder why you're so depressed. Because you're not feeding something good, something nourishing to your soul. What you're feeding is the negativity of the world. And you're getting angry because it is irritating when you see the evil prevailing, at least for the time being. Because the prince of this world is, you know, obviously in effect. So yes, you, you're going to be angry. But do you want to continuously stay angry? I mean... You have to make a choice. At some point, you have to say, you know what? No, nah, no. I'm just going to grow in the knowledge of Christ and focus on him because this stuff is, is just going to keep happening anyway. I'm just going to keep praying for those people involved. That's it. But I'm not going to see you trying to meditate on those things because meditating on those things only affects your, your psyche, your emotions. You were, you were, you were a human being for <laughs> For goodness sake, you are human. I mean, it's like we sometimes forget that we're still human. You know, you feel something. None of us love injustice. None of us love evil. No, we hate it. With, I mean, with a passion. And when evil seems to be prevailing, you want to knock someone out. You know what I'm saying? Doable if you could, you know. But seeing each day and people just keep getting away with stuff, it seems that way. It is annoying. I mean, even me talking about it now, I'm getting a little bit agitated in my spirit just for that alone. Can you imagine watching this stuff every day? Guys, focus on Jesus, okay? Philippians 3.24, citizenship is in heaven, from which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We know he is coming. Why don't we just focus on him? Enjoy Christ right now until he comes. You know, I see so many people who are just so out of it. So, if Jesus doesn't come within the next five months, I don't think I'm going to be able to handle being alive here anymore. I'm gonna, you're making threats. These are empty threats, people. You're not going to threaten God into sending Jesus Christ to come because you don't want to be here. None of us want to be here. But you know what? We're going to enjoy Christ until he comes. We are in a waiting period until he comes. You are supposed to enjoy him because you have him here right now. Jesus is not so far away, away where you can reach him. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Isn't that what he said? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe when Jesus said, I will come and make my abode with you. I, my father, I, my father will make our abode with you. Don't you know that you are a walking tabernacle of God? Spirit of God dwells in each born-again believer. Do you believe that? That's the question. Because some of you act like you don't. Some of you act like you don't. And some of you will go back and say, Oh, you know what? I feel like God has abandoned me. Really, people? So now you're calling him a liar? We have to be careful things we say. You see, that spirit comes from focusing on things in the world and not Christ. Because if you're focusing on Christ, guess what? 
you were assured with him and you will trust in him and what he says to be true, no matter what comes your way, you're going to keep trusting him. If your eyes is on the world and your problems, guess what? That's where you, those thoughts are going to start you know, coming to your head because you start losing sight and focus of the one who's dead the whole time with you. He's always there. He never left. If you're born again, believe him. Finally, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Guys, when you're not meditating on God's words, okay, and you're not focusing on Christ and your focus is on yourself and every single thing that's going on around you, guess what? How can you have peace? You're not going to have peace, people. You know, when I say things like this, it's because I have lived that. And I can tell you guys, I went through major depression, okay? Suicidal thoughts, okay? There is so much that I went through, but some of you will never know that. But I tell you that, okay? You just hate just being here. You just hate everything, literally, you know? Everything, in, like when, when you see people happy, you'll be like, why are you always smiling? Like, I mean, I mean really, that's how bad it got for me. Like, I just didn't want to, because <laughs> I was so like, like so immersed and so bothered by everything here on earth. Well, my focus wasn't on Jesus. I didn't have any peace. But now I can enjoy peace because now I finally understood. We always had Christ. And that's what he's been telling us. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Focus on me. I know the fireworks are blowing around you. Stop looking at the fireworks. Focus on me. I'm here. Look at me. Focus. You know how when you see your child, you know, begin to crawl for the first time, right? For anyone who's been a parent. And you see the child and you're calling the child and cheering from, come on, come on, look at me. Yay. This is what it's like. Jesus is calling, getting your attention. Hey, come, come, come. I'm here. I'm here. Come, just just keep looking at me. And your child is looking at you and excited and crawling faster and faster towards you. This is the response we should be giving people. And not pause. Looking around at everywhere. You know. I mean, come on, guys. I know distractions is there. I see it. But do we focus on distractions or do we focus on Christ? Remember this. If you want peace... Focus on Christ. If you want chaos, you know, lack of peace, lack of joy, then keep focusing on, on, on the world and all the problems. That's just that, you know. You have, an, you have an option, okay? It doesn't have to stay that way. You have an option. And God loves you more than you can even begin to imagine. And I could tell you this, man, you know, it's like... <laughs> A lot of us don't even recognize what we have in Christ and how good we have it. Sometimes we need a reminder, you know. A lot of people won't even preach or tell you about that. They will tell you about your, your best life now, everything now. And then when your best life now that you're trying to get and working out, you start getting mad. Because I thought you said, if I give you all my money, I give my best life now, you know. Like, like you're making an exchange. We don't make any exchange with God. We have nothing good to offer him. Absolutely nothing good to offer God. Nothing. This is why salvation is about receiving what Jesus Christ already did. You are receiving a free gift. You know, there's no exchange for a free gift. And neither is your works that you think that you're doing. I'm going to offer this to God because you know what? This is pleasing in sight. So therefore, you want to please God? Believe in his son. How about that? Believe in his son. Let's start from there. Good works are great. When you're doing some awesome things, you know, to help people, whatever that you've been led to do. 
not because you want to satisfy your flesh and get to boast. Look what I'm doing. Like you see some people how they're walking around with video, you know, re recording what it, all the good deeds they're doing. Newsflash, you just got your reward just from doing that already because people already praised you for it. Sorry. <laughs> you see, anyway, I'm not going to prolong this video any longer. I just want you guys to know something. Focus on things about, focus on Christ. He is coming back, okay? Do not lose sight of that. We are living in the final moments. How long is final moment going to drag on? We don't know that. But we know that the rapture is an imminent event. And when it does happen, all this will be over. No more bickering and fighting, none of that stuff. No more people reigning against each other. None of that. All that will be over. No more people getting mad because you're telling the truth and they don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All that will be over. It won't matter anymore. Some people say, and some people probably say to themselves, you know, when, when we get to heaven, you know, you know, if we're in heaven, I'm never come to this person. First of all, you ain't going to do jack. Because when you're in heaven, let me explain something to you guys right now. We all will be under one mind, renewed. The flesh has no, your flesh here has no place in heaven. So whatever you think that you're planning right now, you could just forget all of that. Because in heaven, none of that will matter. You're going to be hugging all the same people that you've been, you don't cussed out, you don't hate it. You're going, to, you're, going to, you're going to be hugging all of them too. All this won't even matter anymore. This is only things that are appealing to the flesh right now. Okay? But we gain a new body which is glorified. A glorified body is not a prideful one and is definitely not self serving because it is one with Christ Himself. Ever heard about hive mind? Well, that's what it's going to be like. What He likes is what you like. And that's what it's going to be like in heaven. So let's just start sinking for a second. Anyway, you guys have a blessed day and I love you guys and thank you for listening and supporting my channel. And I pray that. Please, that you will find comfort in this and realize how much God loves us and what he wants us to do is to focus on his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus is always here with us. He's here with each one of you who have believed. And if you never believed on him, please do so today. You've heard the gospel. You know what you have to do. Just believe. I agree with God. That's it. You know? Anyway, you guys have a blessed day. Okay? Peace.